Okay, so in this video, I'm going to have a look at uh, the binomial theorem. And this is effectively it. This is the binomial theorem here. So if you have a binomial here, which is basically a polynomial with two terms, um, and you want to expand it or uh, raise it to the power of some number n, this is how you would do it here. So um, we've done this before in a previous video where we've expanded something like this using Pascal's triangle. But instead of using Pascal's triangle, now we're going to use n choose or to find the coefficients. So um, if you remember from the previous video, if you've watched that particular one, to find the coefficients, we um, used 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and so on. So you just add these two terms to find this one, these two terms to find this one, these two terms to find this one, 3 and 3, 6, 3 and 1, 4, and so on. So this will give us our coefficients for this expansion here. Um, now, in this particular case, we're not going to use Pascal's triangle um, directly. What we're going to use is um, our choosing uh, notation. So what we're going to do is use, instead of 1, we're going to use 0, choose 0, which is effectively 1. We're going to use 1, choose 0, 1, choose 1. That's this here. We're going to use 2, choose 0, 2, choose 1, 2, choose 2. That will give us 1, 2, 1, and so on. We're going to use 3, choose 0, 3, choose 1, 3, choose 2, 3, choose 3. So that will give us uh, 1, 3, 3, 1, and so on. So this is effectively what we're going to use now. So this is this part of our formula here. And we're going to add everything up. This is the symbol for just adding up our different terms. Um, okay, and effectively this part here is the same as what we did previously. So let's try an example and see how it works. Um, now we'll take, um, I'll just write the formula down again here just to have it. So we've got a plus b to the power of n. So that's going to be the sum of, uh, as or is equal to 0 up to n. Then we're going to have our n choose or to give us our coefficients. Then the first term to the power of n minus or, second term to the power of or. So this is our formula here. Now let's take an example and try that out. We'll take um, x plus y, we'll take a fairly simple one, and we'll raise that to the power of 3. Let's see how that works. So we want, we're going to start with um, n zero because we st we're starting here at r equal to zero so the our n is three so we're going to start with three zero to give us our coefficient um then the first term to the power of n minus r the first term is our x three minus zero is three and our second term is to the power of zero so our second term here is the power of uh or rather which is zero so that's our first term plus then we go three one um, so 3, 1 is our coefficient. We're going to have x to the power of um, n minus r, which in this case is 2, and our y now is going to be the power of r, which is 1. And we just continue on. This is going to be 3, 2. x now is going to be to the power of 1. Our y is going to be to the power of 2. And our last term then is 3, 3. 3 choose 3. x to the power of 0 and y cubed. And this is it. So <clears throat> 3 choose 0 is 1. Uh, we've got x cubed here. y to the power of 0 is 1. So this is our first term. Plus 3 choose 1 is 3. We've got an x squared and we've got a y to the power of 1. Here we've got 3 choose 1. Sorry, 3 choose 2, which is the same as 3 choose 1 by the twin rule. Uh, so that's just 3 choose 2, which is just 3. We have x to the power of 1 and we have y squared. And then finally, we have 3 choose 3, which is the same as 3 choose 0 by the twin rule. So x power 0 is 1, and we've got y cubed at the end. And that's it, really. So that's how you would expand using the binomial expansion. So obviously, the first and second terms here can vary. This can be, for example, a 5x, and this could be a minus 2y, something like that. So you're going to have to do a little bit more work to to work these out, but we did that in a previous video. Um, so that's the only difference, really. It's just the um, 
using the choosing rule to find the coefficients or part of the coefficients instead of using Pascal's triangle. So um, let's just look at some variations on this that you, some different types of questions that you could be asked. Um, if we take, for example, let's say we'll take the um, 2x and we'll take a minus 3y and we're going to look at raising that to the power of 5. Now you could be asked to find, say, the, um, the fifth term of this particular expansion. Now what you could do here is just simply expand it out the way we did here uh, using the binomial theorem or using Pascal's triangle. Um, but you can also use what's called the general term of the binomial expansion. And uh, really that's just going to be, um, that's going to be n or um, a to the power of n minus or and then b to the power of or. So we can use this here to find any particular term of any particular expansion. So we're raising this particular binomial here to the power of 5, which means there are six terms in our solution, in our um, answer, if you like. So what we're going to do is we're going to say look for the, um, the fifth term. The fifth term means that or will be 4. Because remember, we're starting, when we start expanding this, we're starting with n0. So n0 will be the first term, n1 will be the second term, n2 will be the third term, n3 will be the fourth term, and n4 will be the fifth term. So we want r to be 4. So what we're going to look for here is 5 choose 4. We're going to look at a, which is our first term here, which is 2x. So we're going to look at 2x. We're going to raise that to the power of 5 minus 4. And then our second term here, which is minus 3y, we're going to raise that to the power of 4. So this here is actually our fifth term. If we were to expand this binomial out um, to the power of 5, our fourth term will look like, or, uh, sorry, our fifth term will look like this. So you just need to work that out then. So um, 5 choose 4 is the same as 5 choose 1 by the twin rule. So 5 choose 1 is just 5. Uh, we have 2x here, and we want to raise that to the power of 5 minus 4, which is just 1. And then we have our minus 3y here to the power of 4. So let's work that out a little bit more. Um, we have 5 times 2, that's 10. We have an x here. And then we have minus 3 to the power of 4, um, minus 3 to the power of 4. Well, 3 to the power of 4 is 3 3 is 9, 3 9 is 27, 3 27 is 81. Uh, minus to the power of 4 will just be plus, and then we'll end up with a y to the power of 4 here. Uh, so 10 times 81 is 810. We have an x, and we have a y to the power of 4. So this is it. This is our uh, fifth term of this particular expansion here. Okay, so that's uh, another type of question you could be asked. So let's have a look at uh, maybe one more type of question. Um, now, if we take something like, say, 3 over x plus x, and we're going to raise that to, say, let's say to the power of 6. So we're going to raise that to the power of 6. Something you could be asked would be which term, if you were to expand this out, raise this to the power of 6, which term would be independent of x? In other words, which term, if you were to expand it out, would have no x? So you would just end up with a number, in other words. So let's have a look at that. Um, OK, so we're going to start with um, our n or um, our a to the power of n minus or and our b to the power of or. So this is our general term. So if we want to find any particular term in any expansion, we can use this here. So let's just um, do that for this here now. We don't know what or is. We don't know which term uh, is independent of x. We don't know which term doesn't have an x in it. So, But we know that n is 6, so we'll write that down anyway. So we've got 6. We don't know what or is, so we'll just call it or. Uh, our first term is 3 over x. And that's going to be to the power of n minus or, which in this case is 6 minus or. Uh, we Our second term is x, so that's x here, and that's just to the power of or. So this is our uh, general term for this particular 
um, expansion here. Um, now we don't know what R is, but let's just um, have a look at it. What, what we um, know is that our six R, this part here, R is just a number. And if we do six choose R, we'll just end up with a number. This part here won't have any X attached to it, if you like. Um, now this three to the power of six minus R uh, is also, will, that will just be a number. Now the X to the power of six minus R does have an X in it. And the X to the power of R here does have an X in it, obviously. So we can ignore this part here for the moment. So we're just going to have a look at um, these two parts here. So we'll, we'll end up with 3 to the power of 6 minus R over X to the power of 6 minus R times X to the power of R. I'm ignoring this because this doesn't have any X's in it. Actually, this top part here doesn't have an X in it either, so we can ignore that. In other words, if you raise 3 to the power of some number, you're just going to end up with some number on the top here that doesn't have an X uh, attached to it. However, this here we'll end up with an x to the power of r. I shouldn't put an equal sign here, actually, because it's not equals. Uh, so we, we're just going to have a look at the x to the power of r, and we're going to have a look at the dx to the power of 6 minus r here. This is the bit that we're interested in, really, because remember what we were asked for. We were looking for the term of this expansion that's independent of x. So we know that this doesn't. This is in the, This is um, just a number. The three to the power of six minus r is just a number. The x to the power of six minus r does involve an x, and this x to the power of r does involve an x. So this is the part we are interested in here. Now, if we have a look at that, uh, we've got x to the power of r over x to the power of six minus r. Um, using the laws of indices, that's just simply x to the power of r on top minus the six minus R on the bottom. Remember, put this in brackets here because you've got this minus here. Now that's just going to be X to the power of R minus six plus R. That's just going to be X to the power of two R minus six. So this here, this here can just be simplified to this here. Um, X to the power of two R minus six. Now we don't want an X. Remember in our expansion, we don't want any X's here. We just want numbers, this part here and this part here. So we want to get rid of these X's here. And how can we do that? Remember these two bits of uh, the expansion with just the X's in them, that just simplifies down to this part here. So we want, uh, effectively what we want is the two or minus six to be zero, because if we raise X to the power of zero, we'll get one, the X will disappear. So we want 2r minus 6 to be 0. So that means 2r will be equal to 6, or just r will be equal to 3. So in other words, if in our, this was our original expansion, this is our general term for the expansion. So if we let r equal to 3 here, 3 here and 3 here, the x, x's should disappear and we'll just end up with a number. Now, if r was equal to 3, we're talking about the fourth term of this expansion, um, should be independent of x. There should be no x's in the fourth term of this expansion. So let's see, does that work? So what did we start with? 3 over x plus x. 3 over x plus x. So let's have a look at that. Uh, so we're looking at uh, we're raising to the power of 6. Our r is now 3. Our first term was 3 over x. We're raising that to the power of 6 minus 3. Um, our second term was x. We're raising that to the power of r in this case, which is 3. So let's see what happens if we, does, if we do this. This is our general term for this particular uh, expansion. Now let's see, 6 uh, choose 3. 6 choose 3, if you do that, you can do that on your calculator. It's 6 times 5 times 4 over 3 times 2 times 1, which is actually just 20 times 3 to the power of 6 minus 3, 3 to the power of 3, 3 to the power of 3, over x to the power of 3, times x to the power of 3, over 1 if you like. Now look what happens here. You have 20 times 3 to the power of 3, 3, 3 is 9, 3, 9 is 27, over x cubed times x cubed over 1. 
These are all fractions. You can just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. And what actually happens here is that the x cubed on the top will divide into the x cubed on the bottom here to get one. And you just end up with 20 times 27. 20 times 27 is 540. So the x's just disappear here. They cancel out or they divide into each other to give one. So in other words, the um, if you do six choose three and so on, you end up with a, a term uh, 540. So in other words, the term, when you expand this particular uh, binomial to the power of six, uh, the term independent of x the term that in one of the terms will be 540. There will be no X attached to it. And that's it.